Hi, my name is Shaylee Hinkle and I attend the University of Tampa where I major in environmental science and minor in marine biology and sustainability. And this is my minor phylum project on phylum Foranita. So to begin, these are variform bodied organisms. They are also called the horseshoe worms because their locophore right here is U-shaped like a horseshoe. They were discovered in 1856 and they are exclusively marine and benthic, so they will not be in any terrestrial or freshwater environments. They have a worldwide distribution except for the Arctic seas, and they are mostly sessile, but they do live in chitinous tubes they create and are free living within their own tubes. They are bilaterally symmetrical and are protostomes, although this has been somewhat controversial as to whether they are deuterosomes or protostomes, but ultimately it has been decided that they are protostomes. Um, they are typically about one half centimeter to 50 centimeters in length, and they can be anywhere from the inner tidal zone to about 400 meters of depth. So here's their basic taxonomy, which is also controversial. So there's two genera, which is Phoronosis and Phoronopsis, and that's 14 species, although some scientists will say there is more or less species. And the difference between the two is Phoronopsis has a collar fold directly underneath its lophophore, while Phoronopsis does not. And they're in the Lophophorata pyophyletic group, which also includes the Bryozoa and the Brachiopoda, and it just means that they have the lophophore with the tentacles. And their most recent ancestor is with the Brachiopoda, although recent DNA sequencing evidence seems to think that the Nemertians should be a sister group to the Furanida. And they likely came about during the Cambrian explosion, which was about 540 million years ago. So here is their basic anatomy and physiology. So they do have this U-shaped lophophore, which is made of tentacles and is ciliated, so they can suspension feed as well as do gas exchange. This is the epistome, which is a layer of skin that covers their mouth and is hollow. They have a pair of metanephridium with ciliated nephrosomes to collect body fluid, sperm, and eggs, and nephridiopores to discharge urine. They do have a closed circulatory system with hemoglobin, red blood carpuscles, and two main longitudinal vessels running through their body. They do have this ampulla, which they can use to burrow or anchor themselves in their tubes. And they also have longitudinal muscle that can be either bushy or feather-like. And then they do have this U-shaped digestive tract and their local four only surrounds their mouth and not their anus, so they are separate. And they do form a chitinous tube that they live within. And there is a specific species that has recently been found to have a chemical deterrent, and that is Phoronopsis viridis, and its components are nonpolar and volatile compounds. So here's a little bit about their reproduction. They can be hermaphroditic or gonocrostic, but they are typically hermaphroditic and also polyandrous. They mostly do sexual reproduction because it is a lot more beneficial to them, and that includes internal fertilization. Although some species are known to do broadcast spawning with external fertilization. They usually are reproducing in the spring and summer months, and all but one species produces this larva, which is actinotroph larva, and it is a planktonic form that floats for the first few days and then it gradually sinks to the bottom. When it reaches the bottom, it goes through metamorphosis to become the adult. However, there is this one kind of species, Pharanus ovalis, that has leukithotrophic larva, which is kind of a slug-like larva, but both of these can sometimes be brooded as, as well by the parent. If you look in the top right corner, you can see a video of the actinotroph larva. This is how it moves, and as you can see, its entire body is ciliated, as well as it has large larval tentacles to help it move. Its mouth is going to be at the top, and its anus at the bottom. So now we'll go over the actinotroph larva metamorphosis, which is really unique to the phylum. So first, their metasomal sac is going to stretch and actually evert. 
So you can see right here the metasomal sac actually everts itself. And then the preorbital lobe is going to be digested by the organism itself. And also the distal larval tentacles are going to get digested as well. So you can see right here, this is the preorbital lobe. It starts to digest as long as some of these tentacles. And then the dorsal body wall of this organism is going to shorten and the ventral side is going to lengthen. And also the dorsal body wall, when it shortens, it's going to be what separates the mouth and anus of the adult. And then it takes place in about 15 minutes. The larva becomes a juvenile right here. And the only way that you can tell a juvenile apart from an adult is the presence of this, which is the telotroch. And also the tentacles are slightly smaller because they haven't evolved yet into the definite tentacles. So they will be this juvenile for about nine days. And then the definite tentacles will start forming and this telotroch is going to start to break down and also disappear and be digested. And after that time, then you will have the adult form with the definite tentacles and no telotroch. And it also begins to develop the ampulla so it can burrow and hold itself in its own tube. Here's its ecological importance. Like Diopatra, which is in the phylum Annelida, as it creates tubes and burrows, it's going to help stabilize the sediment as well as reduce erosion on the ocean floor. And they do allow for nudibranchs to feed on them, as well as commercially important species like crabs and fish. And they also, because they suspension feed, are taking up dissolved organic compounds in the water. And here are some recent discoveries. In 2018, a new species was found in the Gulf of Tonkin in South China, and this is Pharanus savankini. It has the bushy type longitudinal muscles, but unlike the other species, it only has one branch of metanephridium instead of two. And it also has this spiral lophophore instead of the typical U-shaped lophophore. And in 2017, another species was discovered, Pharonis embryolabi. This was found in Vostok Bay in Russia, and this is the only known species to be viviparous. Here are some examples so you can see how variable they are in their color and shape. So here is Peronis ovalis, which is the species that has the lecithotrophic larva, and they are gonna be found in the Northeast and Southeast Atlantic Ocean. Here is Peronis hippocrepia, which is found on all the British and Irish coasts. Here we have Peronis australis, and that's more tropical, and it's in the Eastern Atlantic and Indo-Pacific. It was actually first discovered in the Mediterranean Sea, and as you can see, it does have a more black color to its lophophore, as long well as multiple rows. Here we have Phoronopsis californicata, which is found off the coast of California, Spain, and Portugal. And it has very numerous rows of the lophophore, and they are red in color. And finally, we have Phoronopsis avumaculata, which is found near Australia and Costa Rica and also is a more tropical species. So you can see how they can range from thin white with single lophophores to very long red and multiple rows. Thank you for coming to my presentation about the minor phyla for Anita.